Savage here, broadcasting live out of Dallas, Texas. I'm at one of our client sales rallies. I actually have a loan officer from that company with me right now, Michael Harrington. I'm going to bring in Michael in just a minute. Uh, we're going to kick some things off. We got Todd Bookspan. We got Rick Shear. Uh, today's call is all about annual reviews. I think it's, uh, it's pretty cool to have you two as the guests, knowing that you're on you know, two separate sides of the field over the weekend. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Thankfully, I was on the winning side of the field. But, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. All good. Hey, listen, you guys won the game 100%, man. You guys brought it. You left it all on the table, and uh, you guys walked away with the win. So I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> uh, that was a great quiet. Super Bowl. Yeah, no, as you should. Humble, humble winner. Uh, my Broncos were not in the Super Bowl, but I have to tell you, I really enjoyed the game. It was great to see two of America's best teams just rocking out. So, uh, so today is about annual reviews. We, we started this conversation last year. And I think, Rick, you know, I mean, I've been having this conversation with our community for, I think, since I founded Mortgage Coach. But you really re-kicked it in uh, in December. So are you, are you ready to share some of the results that you're having in just about five minutes? Absolutely, man. Good. And then, Todd, why don't you go after Rick? I'm going to do some opening thoughts for folks who have not been part of this conversation, whether you're watching the video or whether you're on this call live. I want to remind everybody why annual reviews are so important. And then, Rick, why don't you be ready to share you know, what, what results are you having, you know, past 30 days. Uh, we do want to make this a mastermind-style call, so it's a lot like our Friday call. If you have questions, if you have success stories, uh, we want to know what they are. Todd, anything you want to say before I start sharing my screen and, you know, rock out the, the why and your reviews? Well, I mean, I think that's it. I think you're going to rock it out. I think that it just, uh, I think it's the most important strategy, I think, for a loan officer in 2018 and looking forward to uh, seeing what we can do to help uh, get this conversation uh, moving even further. Can you guys confirm you, you can see my screen? I can gotcha. see your screen. All right, I'm All right, signing I'm off for a moment. All right. Well, I'm going, to, I'm going to take down my personal video just so I can move some slides here and make sure they go in my hotel in a room. My hotel internet, I don't want to overblog over it. So, so we have put together a bit of an annual mortgage review playbook. There's still a lot of work and a lot of things that need to be added. But I, I want to kick it off with the why. You know, um, this conversation, like I said, it started many years ago. But for the past few months, I've been surveying some mortgage coaches, top mortgage coach loan officers, and getting the results. We'll bring some of those to you here today. But to me, there was an interview. By the way, if you could put your phone on mute, um, whoever just blew up the call there. Uh, anyways, number one interview of the year so far in terms of the interview that's been watched the most was the interview with Steve Brown, uh, former futurist of Intel. And he said some things that I think are super important for us as referral-based local loan officers. By the way, that's what he calls us. You know, big data is here. Artificial intelligence is here and it's growing rapidly. Multi-channel messaging marketing is here. And voice technology is, is just, you know, accelerating rapidly. And, and that means, you know, to the referral-based local loan officer, that means that everything that can be automated will be automated. So all we really have left as our competitive differentiator is our human interaction. And obviously that human interaction is important during a transaction, but if we really want to create clients for life, we need to do more. You know, we need to do annual reviews. And I asked the question of Steve, I asked him, what are some other industries that we can watch as referral-based local loan officers that will help us prepare? And he said, just watch retail. Look what's happening with Amazon and Walmart. Amazon is the technology company that does retail. Walmart is the low cost leader with brick and mortar. And, and by the way, I love this quote from Jeff Bios, your margin is my opportunity. And by the way, that's how all the players in our industry look at it. That's how Rocket Mortgage looks at it. That's how Wells looks at it. Our margin as referral based local originators is their opportunities. And they're just going to get bigger. They're going to get smarter. They're going to be able to predict when a family is going to buy a home, when a family is going to sell a home, when a family needs to refinance. And then they're going to be able to throw multi-channel communication down. You know, and, and by the way, when the family calls a phone number to talk to someone in two years, 
they won't know whether they're talking to a human being or a robot because that's where voice technology is. So as referral-based local loan officers, we need to embrace this concept that the, the lender and the loan officer with the most digital friends wins the biggest, not only this year, but in 2020 and beyond. So the other thing that we need to do, and I, for those of you that have heard me do this rant, sorry, I'm going to repeat it, but until I feel like 80%, 90% of the mortgage coach loan officers are doing this, I'm going to keep, keep it coming. That you need to gather data, that means contact information, different channels of communication, and you need to put it in your CRM so that you can customize and personalize. And that also means mortgage coach. And by the way, you need to do it rapidly. Right now, you already are sitting on more technology than you're using. Literally, 90% of the loan officers that I survey are in this position, even some of the top producers. And, and things are changing rapidly. In 2020 is the milestone. That is the target that we all need to focus on. So the, the loan officer who can digitally upgrade their mortgage practice the fastest wins. When, you, when, when we switch to Rick Share and you really break down his practice, this is a guy who's in Boston. No one connects, has more presence than he does. No one is called old school more than Rick, but no one that's been that old school personal connection originator leverages technology better. He's using all the right technologies so that he can connect with more families. And when he does connect, he can deliver a better experience. And that's where annual reviews come in. Because if you embrace Mortgage Coach and other technologies, you can have that client for life. Just all you gotta do is, when you do close the transaction, close it on time, close it on promise, deliver a total cost analysis. And now once a year, check up with the client, have a human connection with the client, to update their rates and fees, show them what their, what their goals are, and you will have that client for life. And you will not have to worry about the, inter, you know, the, inter, the technology companies that are mortgage companies. So why should you be doing this? Because change is happening fast and you need to be there. Uh, it's also a significant competitive advantage with your realtor partners. You know, it, it will generate incremental loans about for every thousand mortgages under management, so about a hundred loans a year. What I'm scrolling through right now is an article that I wrote in uh, LinkedIn. If you have not read this LinkedIn article, check it out. If you're a manager on this call, share it with your team. But, but this is the playbook. So I'm not gonna do a review of what we've done in past calls because really the purpose of today's call was to keep this conversation going with you guys. Um, with that said, I wanna bring Rick into the call. By the way, Todd, anything you want to share before we uh, ask Rick some questions? You know, the only thing I'll throw in there is, is that, you know, Rick and I were at that Gary V Agent 2021 event. And so when you talk about just watch retail, you know, there's probably, we can maybe riff on that just for a couple of minutes of what we learned there, because that was four disrupted in industries, real estate, insurance, auto dealers, and travel agents. And so I totally agree with that. I mean, that was my big takeaway from the event. And so let's, if we have time, circle on that. I think there's some good value there. For well, the no, let's, 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 let's do that right now. Rick, if you don't mind turning on your camera and let's rift on that for two minutes. And then Rick, why don't you give an update on where you're at with annual reviews and how you're you know, keeping this going? Well, I'll, I'll say this, Rick, Rick and I had a great time. Rick and I had a great time hanging out there. Um, he had a couple of insurance agents that are, uh, in his community there that that literally kind of do the Gary Vee thing with cameras falling around. And uh, we just really had a good interaction as a group. And then you spent the day with 800 people in the Miami Dolphin Stadium. And, you know, my kind of takeaway was is Gary Vee picked those four industries for a reason. You know, I'm, I was surprised he didn't pick mortgage in there as well. But, you know, my takeaway was they were four disrupted industries. And so, Dave, when you said just watch retail, uh, that that's what the future said. I'm like, yeah, bingo, because that's, that's exactly what Gary Vee's doing. And it just seemed to me like we can learn so much from these other industries about primarily client experience was my big takeaway because I sat in on all four industries on different sessions of what they had going on there. And I always, I, I really thought that that was how they were all differentiating themselves and how they interact one-on-one -on -one in a digital world. How are they doing it face-to-face -face with their clients by making it a better experience? And I think that the annual mortgage review is a big key of that, um, as well as some other key parts of the process. What was your takeaway, Rick? Whoop, you're muted. 
Sorry. You hear me now? Now we hear you. All right, perfect. Yeah, to piggyback on that, I mean, I think you know, one of the other things was the fact that a lot of the industries have buried their head in the sand for so long, thinking it's not going to happen to us, right? You got Macy's going, well, you got to come in and try on our, our shirts or, you know, Zappos, you got you to come in and try on the pairs of shoes. Well, well, these, this technology has absolutely gone around all those objections and have put a lot of these, or have shrunk the, uh, the amount of people in these, in these markets. So, you know, one of the things was, is don't put your head in the sand. You got to embrace Embrace it. You got to be ahead of it. And, you know, the social, you know, one of the other things he said was the social media is just starting, you know, which I always think, man, I'm so behind the curve. I'm so behind. And, and, you know, yeah, he just said, listen, you've got to go out there and be the digital mayor of your marketplace, you know, and um, yeah, it's just, we have to embrace the technology. We got to be in front of it. But at the same time, Go back to basics, inner reviews, handwritten notes, you know, all of the things that are just going to make you, wow, stand out and, uh, and be able to, uh, to gather the business that's out there. Well, and, and I'll, I'll kind of piggyback off of that whole idea of social media. I, I totally agree because I think we all do think it's been around for so long and we're not with it. But um, the big, my big takeaway, again, it was kind of watching Matt and Zach, right? These guys are incredibly successful insurance agents in your market and they have a guy come in one day a week and film everything that they do just like Gary Vee has D-Rock following around with a camera. In fact, Gary Vee's got four guys now that follow him around and the funny part is if I turn my camera over here, I actually have a video recorder going of myself here because ultimately what Gary said is that we create content all day in what we do and so he just said you're going to, when I'm sitting here talking to you guys, there's probably going to be a 30 second snippet where I actually sound pretty intelligent and that 30 second snippet is what I should be re, I should be videotaping like I am. And then I should be putting it out there. And what he says is invest money in that. Well, that's just sitting on a tripod. I'm not paying somebody to do that. Um, I'll need to find someone to cut it, but that, you know, ultimately you should be doing these 30 seconds, a three minute, uh, he would call them a rant probably, but where you're taking what you're already creating as content versus sitting there thinking through it, putting the video camera on and trying to script it. You know, this is just going to be what comes out over the next 45 minutes as we finish up this call. And so I think there's a great opportunity for you to think through what advice am I giving clients? What, am, what advice am I giving realtors? And how can I take that content and use it elsewhere? And so um, it's kind of fun. I did a webinar this morning. I did the same thing. I had my video camera going on there. And so, you know, hopefully there was some magic in there. I don't know. I mean, everyone stayed on it. So that was good news. But <laughs> that said, you know, it'll be interesting to see when I watch it, A, what I learn about how I presented and B, See what content there is that I can actually use for something else. And Todd, just one other thing to again piggyback off of that was, um, you know, be authentic. Like authenticity is so underrated right now, where people want to play to both sides, play to the hundred percent. Where you need to absolutely come from your heart, absolutely, you know, talk to your fifty percent, your cheerleaders, the people who know you, love you, and trust you, and really should have yourself come out in uh, in the content that you produce. And I uh, think you know that was a pretty big takeaway for me as well. That, I think that was great. I think the last thing I'll throw in there is just the specialization piece, right? Is that, you know, when I talked to the, the, the travel people were the ones that were, I felt like were disrupted early on, right? Booksellers and, and travel agents by what was happening with the internet. And I sat next to a guy who arranges bachelor and bachelorette parties where people fly all over the world and he provides a unique experience. Um, I talked to a, a guy who had flown in from South America and, you know, flying in from South America, he's, you know, again, how is he attracting people to his agency to fly there, both, you know, from outside of, of his country, as well as from internally in his country. It's just really interesting to hear the specialization piece and think through what you're doing as a loan officer. How, where are you specialized? How can you differentiate yourself? And again, I think that leads right into the conversation here today around any mortgage reviews. No, no, no doubt. And the loan officer of the future is a coach. They're an advisor. They use their technology stack to have more conversations, connect with more families. And when they do connect, they have a better conversation. And when the family leaves them and is not with them, they're connected with them, to them with apps. And the loan officer knows their channel of communication. So, Rick, real quick, for people who have not heard you before, just tell everybody, you know, what is your production? Um, how are you doing annual reviews? And then I have a couple of questions and I just want you to share your results from the past couple months and um, we'll see where the conversation goes. Yeah, man. So, um, yeah, loan officer out of Boston. I've got a team uh, essentially of four. Um, we, you know, we're in the 85 to $100 million, you know, over the last couple of years. So toggle back and forth between that. 
And, you know, we've talked about annual review calls for a couple of years now. And, you know, one of the things was always the reluctancy of picking up the phone, calling, you know, cold calling your past clients, um, having this thing in your head about, oh, man, I hope they had a good experience. I can't remember how this one went, you know, and, and just uh, so, so it was really tough to pick up that phone. And we played with a bunch of different ideas. And, you know, I sat down to try to figure out how to reverse engineer it where I didn't really do any of the heavy lifting. Really, my job was to show up on the phone call with a little bit of context prior to the call, spend 15, 20 minutes on the on the call with my clients um, and figuring out how I could help them in any which way possible. Either be it the, uh, you know, going through their mortgage, figuring out how the, the house is and are there any major re renovations or college or any big expenses coming up. Um, and, you know, also going in and asking a couple of questions at the end, really uncovering context for a couple of my other partners, which we'll get into in a little bit. And so to be able to take the reluctancy out of picking up the phone, cold calling, which I don't like to do, um, you know, I created this system where it's all automated. It's nothing that I actually do. Uh, my, my sales assistant, uh, Nick, actually does everything for me. And what we do is we create this this uh, so on the on the anniversary of every loan, and I don't care if it was last year or four years ago. Everybody gets a hey, it's your interview time. Give us a call. Yeah, there's the email right there. Actually, we still we just uh, uh, we just sent it. You know, we just sent it out uh, for February. But it's it's all around you know the economic um, changes, the political changes. It's really time just to get on the phone for a 10 to 15 minute phone call, and you know we promise it's going to be worth it. Uh, and again, there's a place down there where it says book a time to talk, click here. Now I use a, a software called schedule once. Some people use Calendly. Some people use, you know, a couple of others are out there. Again, it doesn't matter just as long as you use it. And it, it allows people to get the email, click on it and go right into your schedule and book a time that works for them. But really it works for you because it's your schedule, but it's all in the, in the phrasing. So you book a time that works and all I do is I, sh you know, and then it, it shows in my calendar. Then what we noticed was if we touch them a different way, well, we're going to get a different, you know, we're going to uh, engagement. So typically two or three uh, days later, uh, Nick will send out a Sly broadcast. Now, if anybody's ever heard of Sly Dial, uh, it's similar. Sly Dial is you can call one number and go right into their voicemail. So if you don't want to uh, talk to that person, just want to leave them a quick message, you can do that. Sly Broadcast essentially allows you to upload all of the phone numbers and um, send one message, generic message, just something along the lines of, hey, it's Rick Shearer, just want to let you know I sent you an email a couple days ago. Sometimes it ends up in your spam. Some people didn't receive it, so if you didn't receive it, send me an email, I'll send it back to you. Uh, but the important part is, is we need to get on a call, 10, 15 minutes, where we're going to... Um, Talk about your current mortgage situation compared to what's going on in the mortgage market, the economic policies that are, are happening. I want to check in on see how you're doing. And I've got a couple questions at the end that I want to talk to you about. So give me a call and uh, or go to that email. Click on the uh, schedule time to talk. Um, pick a time that works for you. And I really look forward to catching up with you. Uh, and then after that round of people that uh, that go and jump on, uh, we send another follow-up email just saying, hey, it's Rick again. Um, just a reminder, time for the interview. Click here. Really, really quick. And then after that, we just let it go. And what that really means is, is you know, between, you know, 25 and 32 percent um, of the people that we send emails to will um, will will come and book a uh, an interview review call. So, again, I have done nothing besides t tape a generic phone message and I just have my schedule booked up. So it's funny, I had three interview calls this morning um, and you know, was able to um, uncover a, a potential um, purchase in, ref I'm sorry, purchase and sale. Um, had no refi, so both of them were all, the other two were all set and um, two financial planners and a, a CPA uh, was just today. But again, I showed up, I knew what their, their situation was and we dove right into it. So, 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 how much is that in production of just over the past couple of days? Um, so this month we've had 17 interview calls, um, three refinances. Two of those refinances were people in interest rates lower. Um, they're in lower than we are today. 
Um, so uh, one was going down, one was a cash out refinance. Um, six financial planner referrals, six CPA referrals, four estate planner, and two insurance. So that was just wow. um, this last this last month. So so everybody, I mean, connect the dots. You know, not only did were loans generated, but referrals were generated to give to all of his referral partners. And think about that. If you were generating that type of referral flow for your advisors, would that come back? Of course, that would come back. I do want to push a survey question right now. I want to know how many annual reviews have you done in the past five days? So if the answer is zero, let us know. One to three, five to six, seven to 10, 10 plus. Rick, how many um, annual reviews do you do typically in a in a five day period? What's what's the average and what's the high? Well, so it, weekly it's tough, um, but it's shoot typically in the middle of the month because we send our annual reviews the first week, um, and so you know it really depends on when they schedule. I've got people that schedule maybe two weeks, so you know I'd say on the average for the month is about twenty to twenty five. So you know uh, it's kind of tough to to, to nail it down, but I guess you could, you know, divide that by three and get pretty close. Yeah. And what about, are, is there a week that goes by that you don't do an interview or are you doing interviews every single week? Yeah. Yeah. Again, it's just, it's a push in the beginning. So we have people that schedule times, you know, they might be on vacation, so they'll schedule a week or two out. Um, but, you know, um, I would say if not every day, you know, at least every other day I'm on one. But like I said, like today, I had three before our call. Um, I've got one at one thirty today. And I've got one at 4 o'clock today. Um, and that's because we just sent our voicemail out um, for, and we got a new push for this month. Love, love that. Todd, did you have a question or a comment? All right, so just clarification clarifying question. I've read your email before, but you don't send a survey out ahead of time. You're just asking them to schedule a call with you. There's no pre, there's no homework they have to do in order to get on the call with you. Nope. No. I, I, so I started doing that and I actually used to send this all by mail and saying, can you fill this out and send it back to me? It, it, you, you miss that in your in engagement, checking in how the kids, how's the family. So I didn't want to have them come with any, or look at it and go, well, I don't, really need to call Rick because I don't, this isn't going to work or, you know, I don't need any of this or so no, it's definitely a phone call. Um, and I don't know if it's helpful to kind of go through my script of, of what that call looks like. That was my next question. Cause that's the number one question I get asked is, well, what do you say? So if you've got like a standard way that you run through the call, like here's the order of my questions, I think that'd be really valuable. Yeah. So, um, I always say, Hey John, thanks very much for giving me a call. Uh, wow. It's been a year or two years or whatever it is. And, uh, hey, listen, here's the here's the uh, the call is going to be about 10 to 15 minutes. And here's what I want to get out of the call. So first of all, I want to check and see how you and Susie are doing and the kids want to check in and just see how the house is doing. You know, it's been a year and are you doing any improvements? So let's get into that a little bit. I want to check in on what's going on with your mortgage compared to what the market is doing today. So we'll we'll just check it against that and uh, and see um, how you're doing there. And then I've got a cup. I've got four questions at the end that I want to ask you. Um, so does that all sound great? Perfect. Now, before I get started, is there anything that you have a burning question about or things you've been thinking about that you want to talk about beforehand? Um, and like this morning, this guy was about three grand away from dropping his monthly PMI. So he got into that and we started talking about that. Um, and then I went right back into, well, great. How's the house? What major projects have you been doing? And so you start to uncover a lot of things there. Um, when you start talking about, well, you start talking with the family, you start learning about is someone pregnant? Uh, is there a marriage coming up? Is it like what kind of things are happening in their world that, you know, might require uh, some capital? Um, so the family is a great, a great thing. So dive in a little bit into that. Getting into the house and the projects, again, you'll uncover, well, we're thinking about doing a bath soon, or we're thinking about doing a kitchen soon, or adding an addition. Again, these are all things that are going to have people having to write big checks. And as you know, often people don't have 100 grand sitting in their bank account. So we, you know, I'll ask them, well, how do you think you're going to pay for that? Do you have that in savings? Uh, are you looking to tap into the equity of your home? And then they'll say, well, thinking about maybe getting a home equity line of credit. I say, great, yeah, let's talk about that. Let's get into that. Well, as you know, the, or may, you may or may not know, tr you know, tr with the new tax plan, that equity line is no longer tax deductible. So it's, you know, just like taking out a personal loan. There's not really a lot of benefit there. 
Um, but I see that you're at a 4% 30 year fix today. And maybe not over the last couple of days, but you know, before I would say, well, you know, maybe we can go to a four and an eighth and get you a hundred thousand dollars of cash out, maybe go up just a little bit in the payment, but that's gonna lock everything down and and put you in a better situation. So and we can make it tax deductible. So we start getting into do we do a home equity line or do we a cash out refinance? Do we arrange some things that again, you wouldn't probably call this person out of the, the, the blue and say, I can reduce your rate or I can do something. And so I get a lot of that. Now it's time to do some work on the property and tap into some equity. So that's the house conversation. You know, then we get into the mortgage conversation um, and we just see where they're at. And a lot of times they're at a three and a half percent rate. And it's so great to say you are phenomenal like there's nothing you need to do you need to go through your world knowing that you have one of the best rates out there and uh and hold on to it you're in great shape um or again you've had equity in your property we can drop pmi you guys know you can there's a bunch of different things you can talk about there and uncover and then one of the, the last thing that we talk about is you know uh george i want to um Ask you three, four questions. I always like uh, to have my clients rate the advisors in their world. So on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the best, how do you rank your financial planner? So you'll get a bunch of different answers. You'll get, I don't have one. You'll get a two. It's the guy that, you know, does my 401k at work, you know, or you get a 10. Um, and then I, I just write that down and I move on. Um, I ask them about their CPA. Again, same questions. My dad does it whatever, um, or I need one, but you'll, you'll uncover some context. I ask about their estate plan because they have a big asset. We know that. Uh, they probably have a family and they have to protect that. And a lot of people don't have an estate plan. Some crazy statistic, like 92% of the people in this country don't, don't have wills. So that's a really good question to ask. And typically um, they need help there. And I always ask about the insurance. So how's your homeowner's insurance, car, have you shopped it lately? Uh, that type of thing. Once I have that information, I circle back and I say, okay, well, you said your CP, your financial planner was a five. Uh, why is that? Uncover context. And then I say, well, I work with a 10. I work with this guy, Doug Gage or uh, Dimitri, and um, he's an absolute 10. And I would love to introduce you and have a free consultation. I don't get anything for referring them, but I just know that you meeting them is going to put you in a much better position than you are uh, potentially today. Same thing with CPA, you know, and go, go right down the list. And again, I would say 90% of the time I can refer one, um, 50%, no, maybe 40%, I can refer all four. And what that's allowed me to do is go out and add five financial planners because if I give a financial planner one deal a month or two deals a month, they're ecstatic. That's probably double than any other loan officer is giving them. So it just allows me to pack on. And then if any of them say that they have a 10 and it's not their dad, um, what I always ask for is if that person is looking to grow their client base. Um, and typically like, yeah, yeah, he's a good friend of mine. He's John. He's really, you know, working hard. He's a great guy. And I always ask him to make a personal and a warm introduction because I talk with clients like you every time, George, and I want, um, uh, if, if they're looking to grow their business and they're great, he might be someone I can add to my arsenal. They make a warm introduction. I meet with them. I say, the reason why I know you is because of an annual review call. And then we start, and then that actually is a great opportunity to start bringing in the total cost analysis with a financial planner and get them in because again, that's the pitch that I'm, uh, that I am able to make and, and not a lot of loan officers do. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's really the pitch. So, so Rick, one of the things I wanted to make sure we covered today, because it is advanced, um, annual review is how do you integrate this into your conversations with your realtors, with your partners? What's that scripting sound like so that they, um, they refer you to more business? You know, you use it as a value prop. If you can yeah. give us some perspective on that. Yeah, absolutely. And I, so this is something probably I've been doing since November. Um, and so when I'm sitting down with a real estate agent and after we're done talking all about them and how I can help their business and move the needle and we start talking about what my five-star customer service looks like. Um, when I get to the fact that I get on the phone every year with an annual review call with the client, and I you know, go through what we talk about, 
we always want to make sure they're in their best best situation possible. But I hit the fact that I always talk to them about their four advisors in their world. And what I've been saying now is when I'm sitting across from a real estate agent, hey, I would really like to kind of keep it in the family. Um, if you have some tens in your arsenal, financial planner, state, uh, uh, state CPA, and insurance, you know, if there's some alignment there, maybe I can meet with them as well. And, you know, if I think that they're great and I'm willing to refer them, I'd love to make sure that all the people, your clients that you send me, I send them to your people so that, you know, you're getting credit for it. You know, I've got a great relationship now with a new financial planner. The, the borrower is getting served by making sure that their financial house is in order. And um, so do you have anybody in your, in your life that are great? Again, you get two different answers. You get yes and no. And if that's a no, I don't really have it, or maybe I have two out of the four, man, what a great opportunity to say, well, okay, you don't have a financial planner or CPA, got, you got to just reach out to my guys, because if you're not working with them, they're great. And if you could set up a time with your, with your uh, estate planner and your insurance agent, man, I'd love to sit down with them. And if, if, if they're that great, I might have more business for them. And again, we'll use you in 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 that um, and get credit for that as well. And so they're they're moving around their world, thinking of how much business they can send you as the real estate agent. So again, really kind of bringing them into the interview process and getting them reminded, you know, getting the client reminded that oh yeah, remember you came from from Susie, and um, this is Susie's CPA, and I've met, I've sent business to them, and they're great. Um, they love that. And one other thing, too, is I use a, a big spreadsheet that tracks where every single deal came from. And so a little off topic of, of this, but what, I, what I'm able to do is I tell the real estate agent, listen, if you send me jo Joey, who refers me Susie, who refers me Frank, I know that when Frank leads a real estate agent, I know where it came from. So I'm going to always be sending those business back to you. And of course, you know, they're just like, wow, that's, that's great. So, you know, trying to track where every deal came from all the way back to the origin. Um, you know, they love that as well. You know, I, I, first of all, love that. By the way, mortgage coach community, if you have questions, put them in chat. If you're listening to the video, you know, either in Facebook, put your comments, questions below, um, share this. But what about what about the concept? I've been hearing this from other loan officers, where they're actually, do you have any clients? You know, asking the realtor, do you have anybody that you'd like me to conduct a review for? And it could be someone that you think might be getting close and ready to move up. Uh, you know, there could be a lot of reasons. Or you know, hey, would you like to just give me your your past customer database to manage? So I've been I've been hearing a lot of different variations of that. Everything from asking for the realtor's past customer list so that I can help manage those mortgages and vet up some opportunities to, you know, how about a half a dozen that I can do a review for and create some referrals for both of us. Um, have you tried that? Have you, you know, I've just heard a lot of success about that in the market. Yeah. You know, I haven't. And, and um, yeah, I'm wondering if there's any agents that I would do that, yeah, I, I haven't. Here's what I do use it uh, for is, you know, I work um, and coach a lot of uh, offices, real estate offices that have a rental agents in their office. And so what I do use is, is let's go back over your last year of the people you've rented for and that they're coming up on their lease in about, you know, 90 to 120 days. And what we'll do is if you rented it for $2,200, let's, let me just do, I'll do a bunch of rent versus own analysis. Let's get that, those people now, because we're going to be able to show them what they can buy. And that way you can convert and have that conversation. So we do a lot of that. It's a little bit less um, invasive and a little bit less, uh, and it's a slam dunk for the, for the agent because they're going to convert a rental, uh, a potential rental client um, to, into a, a purchase client. So I do use rent versus uh, own analysis in that. Makes sense. And then one more suggestion, because it's getting closer to tax time, is that with CPAs, and I used to do this back in the day, and I know a lot of mortgage coaches that do it, with your CPAs, they know you do these annual reviews. They know you do mortgage reviews and remind them that as they're meeting with clients during tax time, even if you didn't close the loan for someone, you're willing to take one of their clients and conduct a mortgage review. Um, again, show, dating me, I actually used to have a document 
that they would fax me. Like, hey, fill this out and fax it to me. Right. Uh, you know, so uh, I did that a long time ago, but I still know that strategy still works. Uh, if you're doing annual reviews, if you have a relationship with a CPA, make sure they know that, hey, you'll, you'll review any of their clients anytime, even if there's not a loan in it for you. Um, it's just a service that you offer. Did you have something else to say there, Rick? Yeah, you know, one of the things that we've been doing forever, and, you know, I'd love to throw it out there as a tip to everybody out there, and, and you might not be too late on it, but um, if you can get a copy of all of your CDs that you've done uh, in the year 2017, um, print them out, send them to your clients, and uh, because of all the mortgage interest, and, you know, typically people are rummaging through all their documents to find that for their CPA. Um, and I used to, I, you know, um, well, we put a, a letter on top of it, uh, essentially saying, "Hey, here's your CD. Um, you're gonna, your 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 account uh, your accountant's gonna be looking for this. If you don't have an accountant, uh, keep a good sense of humor. Uh, if you need one, reach out to me and let me refer you to the the best. Um, and again, that's able to get a lot more uh, referrals to my uh, CPAs as well. Just a quick tip. Love that, love that. Well, let's do this, Todd. Why don't you come back in here? Why don't you, from a um, win by noon community perspective? Walk us through, you know, what the win by noon community is doing. By the way, I'm going to bring Michael in here in a minute too. So we have the full community of win by noon. But Todd, I'm going to give you the screen. I know you got a couple of slides to share. If you don't mind walking us through what a, what winning by noon looks like when it comes to mortgage reviews. Absolutely. I'm uh, just switching, um, switching over to my PowerPoint and then I will pull up. I think probably the pertinent ver the pertinent uh, slides here. So hopefully you can see this. It uh, sometimes drags in my PowerPoint, Dave. So if, if you guys aren't oh, seeing my see screen, you see it. All right. So of course I got to shine a light on the fact that we did uh, sell out of our Mortgage Coach uh, branded edition. We'll be having more of those for for Q2. But I was so appreciative, Dave, of uh, you allowing us to to create that. And we got such great feedback. We, we got our initial order. We sold through. Uh, we ordered a bunch more. We sold through those. So any current user who wants their version, uh, who's got a subscription to be Mortgage Coach next quarter, you know, feel free to shoot me an email. Happy to set it up that way. But um, of course, had to do a little quick promo. So apologize for that. Um, I guess you know, for me, I, I sort of thought there was two ways I could talk about it. And you know, by all means, uh, Rick or Dave, if you've got questions, you know, jump on. But you know, I think there's there's two things that are key, right? With with win by noon, you know, Dave, you asked me to sort of talk about the structure of the week, and and for me, I always did theme days instead of you know kind of more, uh, hey, whenever it happened. I, I I know a lot of loan officers who are pretty consistent in doing daily annual mortgage reviews, where they're actually proactively calling those clients who did not respond to their letter they mailed or or did not respond to the emails that they did, and and they're pretty consistent with it. But I always find that because they they try to do it every day and every day there's something that comes up that when you bunch it together, I, I see a little bit more consistency and success with that proactive outbound call if that's part of your strategy. Um, and so if you look here, this is kind of my morning time block that I used when I was originating and I did annual mortgage reviews on Friday mornings. That was my proactive time um, to work on it. Um, I will say though, just like Rick, if someone said, hey, can we meet? Cause I did some of them face to face as well as over the phone. Can we do it in the afternoon? Absolutely, because the afternoon for me was my react time, and I called reacting any time that I was actually uh, meeting with a realtor, meeting with a client, or really just following up on emails and phone calls and text messages, just that whole reacting piece. But you know, for me, regardless of what your day of the week is or what your plan is, I think you've got to always come back to that blocking that time, right? I mean, time blocking is something that most people roll their eyes at when they hear it, but if you're blocking your time to focus on when is it that I can be most productive, when is it can I, can I be proactive, and really think through these things. So with annual mortgage reviews, I think there's a couple of key points, right? One is if you don't have an assistant like Rick has, you've got to schedule on time to push out that email, right? To write the letter, whatever it is that you're going to do as your process. Um, I did a call with Dave on January 2nd that's on the YouTube channel where I walked through sort of here was the process that I did of of when each of these things happened. Um, and so watch that if you sort of want to get some more detail on it. But ultimately, you know, you've got to block the time to do it. If you're doing more business and you're fortunate enough like Rick is to have someone to help you, then obviously just clear instructions for them on it would be helpful. And then just really think through how are you going to make this work on your time? Because ultimately what you heard Rick say was he's using 
technology, right, in the digital world to help schedule. So he's scheduling when he is available so that he can still do his most important proactive activities at the other times during the day. And so although he's got time blocked throughout the day where he allows it, he's not allowing people to, to randomly schedule time. He's using technology that says, all right, here are the times that I have and I can do uh, these calls. And so think through how you can implement that because I still see that that is the number one challenge for loan officers is just that idea that you really should and you really can um, actively be in charge, right? I mean, again, it's the whole idea of Henry Cloud always says, you know, be ridiculously in charge. And I just think that the reacting piece is a challenge. I think the other key really is the tracking piece, right? Is really what are your activities? And so um, again, when by noon we're tracking um, the activities that you're doing and you'll notice here we've got two things that um, we added in for uh, this quarter. Um, one was TCA, so how much are you actually implementing your total cost hey, analysis? Todd? Because Yes, sir. Todd, that's what you're doing. We're not seeing your screen change. I don't know if you're showing different Ooh, things. All right. No, I did. So let me just back back out of my um, back out and then let me try to put it right here and see. Are you seeing it now, Dave? Yeah, yeah, we see all that. Awesome. Well, hopefully you saw my time block before. Was that on there or did you just see the cover of Mortgage? No, you know, I didn't. I'm you. sorry, I didn't jump in earlier. I, I didn't know you were actually showing anything on your screen. It just stayed the same the whole time. So no worries. I'll go back, back and I'll. I'll go back and show that in a minute. And if anyone wants, just email me. I'm happy to send you a copy of the slide so that you, that you have it. But ultimately, I, I, I shine a light on just this one small section of the daily tracking page to say that if you're not really tracking what you're doing, I mean, Rick talked about it, right? I use my CRM to track who I did annual reviews for, when I did it. I created a section in there where I was tracking the names of their kids and their wife. And my guess is that Rick's spreadsheet has all of that. And so, I always say two things. Number one is don't overthink it. Don't like, don't think you have to go out there and buy and research some CRM and create some elaborate system, right? Go old school. That's what Rick's doing with, with a spreadsheet so that you actually have that data at your fingertips. It's a whole lot easier if you've created that connection up front with your client and you know who their kids are and you know what's going on in their world so that you actually can ask those questions when you come back and not be surprised like that they, you know, have a wife or kids or whatever's going on in their world. Um, and so for me, it's tracking the total cost analysis. And then, you know, we've been tracking annual mortgage reviews in um, when by noon. And what I find is two things, right? We instituted TCAs as a, as a new tracking and people who hadn't watched any of the, the new videos that I had put out were like, what's a TCA? So it's helping people understand that there's a different way in the digital world to be interacting with your clients. And then also what's an annual review. And so we try to put out a lot of content on that uh, so that we can kind of help. And I love what Rick's doing because I think when, when members of our community share transparently what they're doing from an activity and results perspective, you know, we can all, you know, we can all grow. Um, I'm going to back out for one more sec. I'm just going to swing uh, backwards to um, just real quick. I'll just show this slide one time. And so again, it's kind of review, but this was sort of what my time block schedule looked like. I blocked all my mornings and that was really critical. And for me, Friday morning was my annual mortgage review. And so again, I won't bore you guys and run through each of these uh, steps. Um, I'll show you how you can kind of access to get free info on uh, this if anyone's interested. But um, that was the slide I was talking about before as I as I ran through it. Um, and then again, I think the last thing that you should be doing is again from a tracking perspective. Oops, that's not the slide I wanted to show. Um, from a tracking perspective, is you really need to be reviewing it on at least a weekly or monthly basis. Like how are my numbers? What are my conversion rates? And what I loved about what Rick did is. He actually said, hey, here's my results, right? I had so Todd, 17 a, annual mortgage uh, review calls. Just heads up. Man, oh, man. All right, let's try that again. All right, can you see it now? Yeah. All right. All right, I'll try to bring a big screen, and if it doesn't go, go big screen, then, then just tell me. But <laughs> It just went black. Again. All right. All right, I'll just leave it back here then. So, um, so. I would just say this, right? When you are, you know, if you're not tracking, what are those totals? I mean, I love the fact that Rick is tracking how many calls, um, how many deals he's getting, right? That's the one that we all would track, but he's also tracking those referrals out to the financial planners and CPAs, right? I mean, think about that. He sent out six to financial advisors, six to CPAs. I mean, what a difference that's making and how he's able to go out there and get, get new business. So he, he sort of shared, he shared with us the most successful strategies that I hear um, because he's integrating that and you know, hopefully that is helpful for you guys um, and kind of gives a little bit more um, of an idea. Um, 
All right, Dave, what did I miss? What else would you like to me to drill down on? Well, what I'd like to do, uh, by the way, I, I brought Michael Harrington up to my room. I wanted him to go through this because he's a, a big user of um, Win by Noon. And Michael, if you could just real quick share with how you're using it to track your day. Yeah, absolutely. Um, number one, I got four kids, an extra kid at the house. And so obviously it was really helpful to track my entire day. This is kind of, I'm going to put up the camera real quick, but this was yesterday, which included a four hour drive, by the way. Um, so during the drive, I actually wrote down the names of who I was going to give a call to, which included two annual mortgage reviews. Um, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, the key thing is for us, it was uh, it was more about like because I'm from the Houston area, so it was more like an annual hurricane review uh, that, that uh, stemmed us calling all our past clients, and it really kind of spawned uh, something for us to stay in closer contact with our clients. But uh, we we call at least five a day of past clients because I've got about a thousand and forty past clients uh, for the last 22 years, so it's quite a few to call through. But we have a list that I keep in my car. I use this to track who I call, and, and then uh, my assistant takes this at the end of the day and puts it into a computer screen on Google Docs. Love it. Love it. Well, I, I wanted Michael to come up for a few reasons because I think he epitomizes, like a lot of top producers epitomize, the characteristics of what separates average LOs from loan officers who close over 100 loans annually. And, you know, I, Todd, that whole part about win by noon, one of the things I think is so special about it is it drives consistency. So I, I did a survey um, over the past week where I'd probably asked at least 20 loan officers that are high performing, close over 100 loans. I've literally sent an email to every top coach in the industry, and 80% of them have responded to me. So, you know, the Tim Brahim, the Bill Hart, Todd Duncan, you know, Coach Mike White, Coach Todd Bookspan, you know, all these coaches, and I've consolidated Kevin McGovern. Um, I've consolidated this list of what do the top performing loan officers do. And, and the themes are, and I'm showing it on my screen right now because I posted it, consistency. By the way, if you are using Win by Noon, you're being consistent. They have clear goals and plans yeah, yeah, yeah. daily, <laughs> weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually. They do the work. You know, they, they time block time. And part of that, that prospecting, what we're advocating for and what we're recommending is not just going out and looking for new partners, but doing your annual reviews. You know, and by the way, if you're new in the business, you have to do four hours of prospecting every day for like 18 months. Um, they're always upgrading their scripting and their client presentations, a la Mortgage Coach. By the way, if you're not using Mortgage Coach, you do not have the best client presentation. Simple. You may have a good client presentation. You don't have the best presentation. And then they're relentlessly following up with their clients. They have systems and practices, again, yeah. win by noon. That's why it's such an important cornerstone to the overall success of you as mortgage professionals. So I just felt like we couldn't do a, um, an annual review call without talking about the structure, the systems, and the planning so that you actually deliver, you have something you execute on a consistent basis. Michael, anything else you yeah, want to Yeah, I was just going to say, I, I took something from uh, your book from, you, you actually added it to SlideShare from years and years ago. Uh -huh. And I was looking at some of the scripts for the financial planners, and I was trying to apply it towards the annual mortgage review. And this is the question I now ask, which is, because uh, after 20 years, some of my clients are just buying investment properties and not really getting into a new house. So I say, what percentage of your portfolio has your financial planner suggested keeping in some form of real estate and that always spawns an interesting answer why well, don't i don't i don't know i mean maybe my house and i'm like well it should be closer to 25 percent according to most financial planners i talk to so if that's the case you need to buy some investment properties have you looked at that and of course if they don't have a financial planner that gives me the prospect of giving business to a financial planner yesterday we gave business to a financial planner he in turn called me back we set up a lunch with his entire office he gave me a 1.4 million dollar anesthesiologist deal within hours of that happening. Love it. So there you go. Love it. And by the way, how, how many um, units on average are you closing per year? Uh, right now we're going to be uh, hedging for 200. We did 145 last year, but also we're already on track. So we're increasing our price point through financial planners. Right. And, uh, and, and hitting about 200. So. Awesome. Well, great job. Thank you. So here, we got about 10 minutes left. Uh, I want to make sure, community, if you have questions, let us know what they are. Also, want to remind everybody whether you're watching the video, whether you're live, uh, 
our Facebook group is trending. I mean, not only are we adding, you know, multiple people per day, top loan officers, for opting into this group, but the, the questions and the comments are great. So if you're watching this video, if you're on this call live, you know, engage with our community. And as the host said, you know, we want your likes, but your, your comments really drive a lot of value for everybody. You know, we learn a lot when we comment, and it helps drive the whole community. So, but by the way, Michael, do you have any questions for Rick or Todd before I talk back to them? Well, I just want to like, congratulate Todd on constantly changing uh, this book. I, I actually was in a room yesterday morning before it was to Dallas in Houston. Every one of my real estate uh, agents in the room, they were, they were doing a uh, Buffini class, and every single one of them, there was in the room. They all had their book out. They all made a plan that morning. I, I was looking at their, their top, today's top three to see if they'd fill it in. They knew better than to come unprepared with our books yesterday. And I love the fact that you're changing it. They always say, can I just get a full year in advance? I said, no, no, no. So I'd like to change it every quarter and make it even better. So just trust me, you don't need the full year. Some of the women, they want to plan on vacations out to the you know, end of the year and stuff for Christmas. And I'm like, just be patient. We'll get the quarters to you each, each, each quarter. But um, I just want to say amazing job on this. This has really changed uh, everything. And I noticed that I was planning our family vacations all the way through December uh, in order to make sure that uh, the work fit in after the fact. And so I appreciate uh, all that you did with the, the day planners. I've made every way in my office get one. Uh, I didn't buy theirs. I bought the ones for the real estate. No, I'm just kidding. That's a record violation. I'm just kidding. That's just, <laughs> I'm just a joke. Now, Rick, I want some questions for you. Um, how much exact time? So I, I, I'm, I'm very much about time. So how much exact time do you truly dedicate? And you, you have a cutoff switch saying, okay, I've, I've, I've talked this many minutes with each person. What's your cutoff time really for each family person? You like the father, the, the, the mom, whatever you really talk to. You must have kind of a point where you say, okay, I got to get to the next one. And then what's the total time each day or each week that you say, I'm doing AMRs? You're on mute, Rick. I missed the last part you said. How much time do you dedicate to each person that you do an AMR with, and then how much time yep. each day do you dedicate to AMRs? Oh, AMRs gotcha. Yeah, so, so um, I always set the table up front, right? I'm, I'm telling them what we're talking about and how long it's going to take, and I even say it in the email. So there, there's, um, uh, so it's uh, really 10 to 15 minutes. And we really stick to that, you know, even if it's setting out referrals and it's sending out, uh, it's something that we can refinance. Um, typically, they don't go any more than 20 to 30 minutes. So the way my calendar is set up, it's 30 minute increments, uh, but really, uh, so it's 30 minute blocks, but 15 minutes. So everybody, when they fill out an application, will fill out a, um, a schedule, it's for a 15 minute phone call, but I've blocked off another 15 as a buffer. So, um, you know, it's about, it's about, um, um, yeah, it's about 15 minutes. The, um, and then as far as how much time, you know, I keep my, I, I keep my schedule pretty open. I block off the times that I need to uh, be working on my business. I block off the times, the meetings with my team and that type of thing. And I allow my clients to kind of fill in around that. So again, I, I think to today, three, four, wait, I have five interview calls. Tomorrow, I have one. So it really just depends on and and within schedule once you can set your own, uh, its own link to just uh, have people go and do it during your interview times. So it, it could be separate from your, your current calendar. So uh, I just I just kind of let them all fill it in. And, and Rick, one more thing. Um, do you call the referral partner before or after possibly saying, hey, I just did an annual mortgage review with your client and uh, it might be a good idea to do a CMA for them and send that over to them just to remind them who you are and then also to help me with my appraised value on, on their situation? Yeah, so that happened twice. Um, I, th um, I thought I mentioned it, but um, there was two referrals back to agents this month. And so um, one client was uh, on their third kid, two bedrooms. So, um, you know, they have about six months to go there. So, um, you know, the, the broker was Carrie Gatto and I called Carrie and I go, hey, heads up. I just said, I asked these clients to reach back out to you and I said, I would be calling you to reach back out to them as well. Um, so they're going to have to move up. Uh, and then the other one is a divorce situation, which had happened in the last week. Um, and I said, well, hey, you know, 
know, Deborah was your, your broker. Uh, I'm just going to have her reach out to you so that you can just kind of strategize around a plan there. So that's the cool part about it. And I get credit for that from the agents, right? Because they could have gotten something shiny and went somewhere else, but I was able to kind of keep the group together. Um, and I reiterate that to the agent when I, when I get on the phone. So um, yeah, I love those ones. Love that, Rick. So I want to, I had a bunch of questions come in about different LinkedIn articles. Uh, by the way, if you go to my LinkedIn, you know, profile and look at all the different articles, you can thumb through those. You know, this morning I posted something about the Darren Hardy interview that I did, the Todd Duncan yesterday. Um, but this one right here is the one that makes a case for annual reviews. And then I think the question that just came in was asking about the the letter. It's this one right here. Uh, so November 25th. By the way, if you're having a challenge finding it, um, you can always ask a question in our Facebook group. So just a reminder to everybody, we've got this amazing mortgage coach productivity mastermind Facebook group. If you are not already a member, do a search, ask to be approved. Todd or I will approve you or someone else on the mortgage coach team will. And then also share it. You know, you can add members. We've made this group so that you can invite other um, loan officer friends to the to the list. So feel free to invite any mortgage professional that you think can contribute to this list. We're always looking to, to grow it. So do you well, not, and don't forget too, Dave, you can search in there right down in the corner there. You can search the group. So you could type in mortgage review and you'd see all these things that we've been talking about for the past two years in there. Um, just over there to the middle left side of there, you can always search the group. And so it's such, there's so much value in that group. And, and I just love, you're right, Dave, all the engagement that we're getting in there and, and, and appreciate all of you who are posting questions. And actually, even more importantly, those of you who are answering the questions that people are posting, it's, it's been phenomenal. Dave, yeah, I got a, uh, a question. You can search it. As I just said, I searched annual reviews and all the interviews, everything that we talked about in that, you know, category showed up. Uh, thanks for pointing that out, Todd. Uh, Rick, anything yeah. else you want to add before we wrap up today's call? Yeah, I'll, you know, we've only got three more minutes, so it, maybe it's not on this call. But uh, maybe if you can – I'd love to know why people aren't doing interview calls. I, I mean, it's the lowest hanging fruit. It's the, the cheapest acquisition of, of, of a deal. Uh, you know, you don't have to whining and dining and, and, and your real estate agents. And I mean, you're already sitting on this pile of opportunity. So I don't know, maybe if you can, you can start up a, 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 um, something in the Facebook page, but I would love to know just why. <laughs> I, I love that, Rick. Uh, well, yeah, I, and I can answer it, right? Post Let's, you know, let's find out all the reasons. I, I will tell you, I, we did um, that little, uh, not little, but the, the mobile coaching platform. And when people would give reasons that they didn't do it, you know, they ranged from I was sick to I was at an event, uh, you know, too many leads. You know, there were, there were a lot of reasons like that. But why don't you post that question? Let's see what comes up. I love it. Yeah. And then remember, folks, we're building out this annual mortgage review playbook, which has sample scripts, sample emails. Uh, you can download it from uh, the link I, in the, the handout in the go to webinar. There's a handout section. And also, if you're watching this on the video, you're watching it from YouTube, in the description below, we will put a link to the download. So I, I hope everybody got a lot of value from today's call. I'm gonna post a closing survey let us know what you thought of today's call. If you are a guest and you would like to um, get a demo of Mortgage Coach, click the last option. But let us know what you thought of today's call. And before, oh, I guess I pushed it out too quickly and closed it, so it's gone. Uh, but hey, Rick, thank you for jumping on this call, adding so much value. Todd, thank you. And then uh, big thanks to Michael for coming up and hanging out. Always, uh, always my pleasure. Um, thanks, Rick. I look forward to seeing your Eagles jersey. Uh, Michael, certainly appreciate uh, your support in the Win by Noon community. And as always, always a pleasure to be here. Yeah, Dave and Todd, you guys, you guys are a, a gift to our industry. So thank you very much for all you do. Uh, right on. Uh, thanks. Appreciate you. Have a great day, everybody. All right. See ya. All right, guys.